ultimate review. No, honestly, really? Okay, well, ultimate means when something is happening at the end of the journey. And as other YouTube reviewers will lead you to believe that this is a trouble-free printer, hmm, join me on this short but sweet episode about my experience I've had using this printer, as well as some advice I can give to you to help improve that experience. Okay, Mr. Dre, if you may. Come with real, it's the next episode. So once I'd gone past calibrating this printer and getting it working 100%, the quality of the models that this printer produced were outstanding and completely a league of their own compared to the price per point that this printer is benchmarked at. Let's have a look at some of the models I've produced on this 3D printer and you can see for yourself the accuracy and quality that this printer can produce. Well the first thing I had to print once I had it calibrated and tuned in was the famous dragon. This is basically a flower pot, put some water in there and put the flower in his mouth and looking at this and you've seen the videos and the other reviews just absolutely blown away but when you look down here this is misprints because the bed wasn't level and so it skipped a few steps there but generally stunned absolutely stunned by this model and I've never seen in this quality ever in since having a 3d printer here we downloaded a spoctopus and I want to show you if I can zoom in close enough without it losing focus look at the accuracy of those fingers absolutely stunning in fact it's so accurate the print even the lazy modeling of just gluing on a physical hand to what was a tentacle there and you can actually see the bad 3d model that was used it's even done that you can also see the facets of the 3d model the polygons that make up that 3d model so it the quality wise it surpasses anything I've ever seen in my life and to be honest with you I just couldn't praise it enough and all the downfalls that this printer may have had uh, they basically null and void now because of the quality of the printout. Here we have a frog a uh, very tiny model and this was set to the highest resolution I can print using the nozzle in this and this was actually on the SD card when they provided it and I cannot stress how smooth the back of that frog is. It's even so difficult to see even the layer, layering of the 3D print. It's so stunning. Ribbit. Here's a pug. The quality and the detail of that is, uh, again, just stunning. Normally when you get to the top there, it fails. We even printed out this cute octopus in glow-in-the-dark PLA, which was just some rubbish PLA that we had. We switched on a new feature in Curo in the new Curo version, which is called Fuzzy. And it actually made the surface slightly fuzzy. You can even see that we changed filament uh, just as it started, and then we changed it to blue. So it had an orange bottom and blue top. Now that's Marvin. This is, this is printed out by my nerdlings because they love using this machine. So, with this good, this bad as well. And what is bad? ABS. We all love and hate ABS. And what can you see on this that is bad? Well, you can see it's bowed. I mean, it's really badly bowed. Um, and to be quite honest with you, I was expecting that. So there wasn't any disappointment on my side. And what's the solution for ABS? Glue stick. Glue stick helped uh, with the bed adhesion. And in fact, it worked impressively well as you can see from here I did another print and this actually stayed glued on quite well and I cancelled the print halfway through because you know we'll just check it for better to so how can I benchmark accuracy well if you know my channel you know I'm a big fan of these and these are called 18650 18 diameter and 65 in the length I did a CAD model of an 18650 and printed it out on a very low quality print to see how well it prints. 
And to my surprise, when measuring this, it is 80 millimeters wide and 65 millimeters tall. And that is pretty stunning. And why is that stunning? Well, it means that when I design a CAD model, I can now start using the correct tolerances and have the confidence when the part prints, it will fit first time. So now we know that this printer can produce both accurately and the prints are of an extreme high quality nature. And therefore, parts like this, which are very small and detailed, that are used with tight tolerances for bearings, like the Aegis dry line, is never going to be a problem because they fit and work the first time. And as parts as complicated as this design, where layer adhesion is equally as important as accuracy of the printed part. Well, I'm fairly sure by now you're going to be convinced that this printer can really perform. So that leaves us with no defilifying this machine and talk about how we can improve our experience with a few modifications here and there. There's a lot of fudging going on with the pinned sensor which is over here and you have to find the exact height relative to the nozzle. To aid this what I've done is I've calibrated mine and finally got mine working so I've made this handy little guide which will be available on Thingiverse and I'll make links in the description that will help you adjust pin sensor to the nozzle. And this guide works very simple, it's basically two surfaces, one is higher than the other, the nozzle sits on that surface and the pin would sit 1.2 millimeters above the nozzle. It's going to be a very helpful calibration tool when you come to setting up your pin height. One of the clumsiest things on this printer is actually changing the spool itself. Now on Thingiverse there is a design available where you can just simply lift out the reel using a centre spindle. Whereas the existing design provided by Prusa is fairly inadequate and cumbersome. While we're on the subject of upgrading our spool holder, why not also include a filament guide which hopefully will prevent any filament getting tangled up within the reel. Another area that's cause for concern is the actual bed levelling sensor here. It has actually a right angled edge along this cylinder here and it sits quite close to the height of the uh, nozzle but when you're printing intricate models the edges of those models may curl up just to normal thermal cooling um, and then this actually would engage and interfere with that curled bit and if you've got this on the quiet mode, then there's more likely that this is going to skip a step because there's not enough power in the actual stepper motors. So the best solution is to actually print out a top hat for that sensor. You want to keep that to the bottom of the sensor. So it creates this ramp that allows it to ride up any curled edges or areas that could possibly interfere with the sensor here. I generally don't like to use the quiet mode anyway, so I always have mine on the normal mode. So while we're on the subject of the E3D nozzle, uh, E3D actually produce something called a silicon sock. And the idea is that it keeps the nozzle as well as the block itself clean from any burling filament. Uh, the added beauty is that there's also a lot of temperature stability when using that sock. And it also provides this kind of ramp design. It prevents any further interference with models that have killed edges as well. And if you can't get access to a silicon sock, then all you need is a small brush like this. Heat up the nozzle, give it a quick rub down, and you'll have a clean nozzle in no time. Well, that pretty much concludes these three-part series on the Prusa i3 Mark II, and I hope that you thoroughly enjoyed them. If there's any recommendations regarding improvements that we can make to this open source machine, please feel free to include these comments in the comment section below. We're quite excited that we've got this. We're going to be using it thoroughly in future projects, and in the up and coming episodes, we're going to show you how we're going to use this. If you enjoyed this series, then please feel free to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. Like the video, that always helps the channel. And anything that's constructive, please leave it in the comment section. Thank you for watching and look forward to seeing you in the next episode.